Hi Moonbeam friends. I am Camille and I do Millie Made Art and it's watercolor and today I'm going to teach you how to do just some basic watercoloring. So you should have three different pages that you've downloaded, some PDFs that were provided for you. The first will be your list of supplies which we will go through. And then there's just a little tutorial sheet that teaches you how to do it that we'll use while we're painting. And then also this is what we will be making. So you can download this if you want for reference. You don't have to. Okay, first of all, let's get our supply list and let's go through this. And you shouldn't really need to go to the store or leave your house to do this. Um, if you have children, a lot of these supplies will be on your list. Um, even if you don't have children, you probably have a lot of these supplies. Okay, our first one is our watercolor paint. And my favorites are actually just these cheap pan sets. I just got them off Amazon, or you can probably find them at Hobby Lobby or Michael's or your local store. But like I said, you don't need to run out and buy anything because we're supposed to be staying home. Um, and a lot of these are really inexpensive. Watercolor is just a simple, form of art, you don't need a ton of supplies, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Okay, the next thing are our paint brushes. And these can get pricey, but I've found that I can buy inexpensive brushes in bulk too that do just as well. Um, these are Master's Touch round brushes. And my favorite that I use the most is a size six and a size eight, and those will be the sizes that we'll be using today for our class. Okay, next on our list is watercolor paper. And there are a lot of different preferences for this. Um, Arches is a popular one, Strathmore, and I like Canson, 140 weight. And what I usually do is I like to buy like the extra large, large pad, which is 18 by 24 inches, and then I'll just cut it down and I can get like five or six pieces out of one big piece. So that's what I've done here. I have five pieces. Okay, and then you'll just need your jar of water and a paper towel. So you can blot and sometimes you get too much water on your brush and you just need to get rid of it. So just blot it on your paper towel. Okay, and really, just keep it as simple as possible. Uh, it's, it's an easy thing to do. Like I said, you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need to leave your home. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's learn a little bit about how watercolors work. Um, most of you have probably watercolored. We all did it in elementary school. So I'm going to use this pan set and we need to just add some water to the color that we want to use. Sometimes I'll go through with a spray bottle and spray them all so that they're wet. But we're just going to add some water and I'll use this dark pink. And the way watercolor works is the darker color, you have less water on your brush and more paint. With other kinds of paint, you usually like to make it lighter or darker. If you wanted to make like the pink lighter, you would add white to it. With watercolor, you add water to it, more water than paint. So we're gonna start with it dark. So I'm gonna have more paint on my brush than water. Let's see if this works. And you can try this too, and you might wanna try it later. Okay, there's my pink. I'm gonna add a little water. Okay, and as I add, more water and less paint. It's just gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter. So just, you can play around with that and, and get a feel for it and see how it works. Okay, and then another fun thing is blending the paints together. And this is fun to play with. So I'll use my pink again down some pink and then let's do like a yellow. You just kind of can put them by each other and let them bleed into each other. It's fun. Okay. 
Or you can even do like triangles or squares. See how it bleeds right there? Just kind of helps you to get a feel for how the watercolor works. Okay, now I want you to pull out your little tutorial sheet that has the instructions. And we're going to make some roses and some sunflowers or daisies and then learn how to make different kinds of leaves. Okay, so use that as your reference. Um, we'll start with the rose. Decide what color you want to use, and it doesn't really matter. You can do pink, you can do blue, you can do yellow. I'm just gonna use this color that I'd used on the tutorial sheet that I made and on the wreath that I made. Okay, to start with, number one, you're gonna start with your center. So you just make some little dots or squiggly lines. Okay, we're going to make petals on our rows. And on your round brush, the very end of the brush is pointed. And you're going to start at the tip at that point, just barely having pressure, and then you're going to put more pressure on it, and then come up. And you're just going to continue to do that around your rows. And you can load as much paint on your brush or as little paint as you want. And you're just going to keep going around until your rose is the rose you want it to be. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. Okay, and then I'm not going to put the black dots on right now because the last step, and you don't have to do this either, I just have it on the tutorial sheet. When it's dry, you can go back and like dab some black in the middle or if you want some yellow or something else, just kind of to give it a little bit of a dimension. Okay, so practice your roses. And now we're going to do the sunflower. And this can also be a daisy, like you could do pink or purple and make it a painted daisy, but I'm gonna make a sunflower and that's what's on your tutorial sheet. So I'm going to get my paints wet. And for the sunflower, the center, I will start with, similar to what I did with my rose, just like some dots or squigglies with like a brown, a dark brown. And then I'm gonna do my petals. And same thing as the roses. We're gonna use that tip of our brush to start. And I'm just barely gonna put it in the brown because I like the paint to bleed sometimes. And then lift up. Okay, the tip just here. Draw it out, put pressure, and then lift up to make the point of your sunflower, the end of that petal. Okay, let me Doing your petals all the way around. And then, like with the rose, you can go back and after it's dry and dab some more dark brown or some black, or you can always go back and darken things up too. If you want to add some dimension to your leaves, you can load like darker, less water and more paint on, and you know, go back and do something like that. Or like this. But wait till your first layer dries before you do anything on top of it. Okay, now we're gonna do some leaves. And I love leaves, they're fun. Although sometimes greens are hard for me. It's hard for me to find a green that I really like. 
Um, this is the one that I prefer. It is, I didn't tell you about these earlier, these are um, the tube watercolors, and they're quite spendy, um, so I don't use them a lot. But this is my favorite green, and it's olive green in the Windsor and Newton. And so we're gonna use that. I'll show you how to do a leaf. I already have some over here in my pan. And it's the same thing, you need to just add water to it, just squeeze it out, add water to it. Okay, for a leaf, we're going to start again on our very tip, our pointed end of the brush. We'll just come down, we'll do this. Start up, bring it down, apply pressure, and come up. So just practice a few of the leaves. Tip, apply pressure, bring it up. Okay, and you can also make different kinds of leaves. Like for a tulip, you're gonna have a longer leaf, so you're just gonna apply pressure longer. So we'll start at our tip. Apply pressure longer, and then bring it up. So try a few tulip leaves. Start at your tip. Apply pressure, bring it up. Okay, and then if you want to make a little bit broader leaf or wider leaf, you can put two of the small leaves together. So we'll do that now. The tip, pressure up. Okay, and then just to the side of it, do the same thing, the tip, pressure and up. And you can leave white in the center so it kind of looks like there's a little vein through it. Or you can put them right together. And I like when they bleed. I like, it's just kind of fun to see how watercolor works. to make one bleed. See how there's more color right there, kind of pooling. When it dries, it looks really awesome. Okay, let's put some stems on our leaves. I'm just gonna make a few leaves and then I'll add stems. So you do the same. Make just a few of these simple leaves by using your tip. Applying pressure and coming up. Just do several of those in a line. Okay, now to add a stem, you're just going to use the very tippy point of your brush and just lightly draw it through between your leaves. And I just kind of will put like this part of my hand on the paper to kind of give me support so I'm not so shaky and then just draw it through. Okay, I'll go back and attach these leaves. Some of them aren't, it looks like they all are. Let's put one that needs to be attached. Just like that, pretty simple. Okay, I want to tell you too about your paints. You can mix them, don't be afraid to mix them. Um, this is the green that I like, but if I add blue, like a dark blue to my green that I already have out, I have too much blue. It will make the color change. Different color of green. 
also, I'm going to take my same green. I'm going to add a little yellow. Gives me a different color of green. And you can also add brown. Whoops, that's a lot of brown. So it's just fun to play with them. So don't be afraid that you're doing anything wrong. It's all up to you how you do it. Sometimes I think, oh, well, other artists don't do it that way. I'm doing it wrong. But I just do it my way, and I think most artists do it their way. So there's not a wrong way to do things. Okay, um, if you want to add dimension, like to your leaves, like I said earlier, you're going to want to start um, on your sheet down here lower. I've done kind of a stem with different colors of leaves. And just to give you the idea, you're going to want to start with your very lightest color first. Um, let's just start with my green that I like because it's not too dark, just to show you. So I'm going to make a leaf. And then, I can't show you right now because I'd need to let it dry. But what I would do if I wanted to put a darker green in here to add dimension, I would let my lighter color dry first and then I would go in with the darker green and go on top of that, like I could layer them a little bit. And that'll kind of give it some dimension, but you need to make sure that your first layer is totally dry. And then I would go back in and add stems after I'm done. Okay, now that we've practiced a little bit, we're ready to start our wreath. And I have only used my number eight brush. So I think I'll just continue to use that for my wreath. Um, I like to start with my bigger flowers and then add the leaves around. And I don't draw it on, I just do it freehand. I like it that way, it gives you more freedom to kind of go where you wanna go and do what you wanna do as you go. So I am first going to make my roses and you can put them wherever you want, be creative. It doesn't have to look just like mine. If you want to do the sunflowers or painted daisies, do those. Um, I might do one daisy, but I'm going to start with my roses. So I'm just going to make a few roses here. And I hope that after your project is all done that you will tag us so that we can see to see what all of you have made. Maybe I'll put a sunflower over here on this side. My yellow has some green in it. And you remember, you just start at the center, put pressure, pull your petals out, and just keep going around. Okay, now I'm gonna add my leaves. Get my green that I like. And I'll just add some leaves to this rose. And I'm just gonna keep adding leaves. Add a different color of leaf. Maybe I'll add a little bit of the blue to my green. Just so my leaves aren't all the same color. Okay, now I'm going to go through and just add some stems. And I can always add in more leaves after if I want to. Connect some of these that I have already. Too much 
water and paint. Okay, and then I think I might add a little brown to my green. You can also get, um, like if you want to test colors, a lot of times I'll have a little scrap piece of paper where I can test it before I put it down. See if I like it. Okay. So I'm just gonna go and add some of these longer leaves here and there. And just keep adding leaves until you're satisfied. Something else that I like to do, you'll notice there's um, just kind of these little flecks of paint to add a little bit more color. So you can go in and do that. Just use the tip of your brush and just make little little dabs here and there. This looks like kind of little blossoms. Okay, and you can add another color. You can add as many colors as you'd like. Okay, I think that I'm going to stop there. And then after it dries, if you want to go in and put more dimension with some darker leaves, you can do that. But I'm just going to stop here. Um, also, after it dries, you could go in something that I've seen a lot of people doing. I've usually used like a black fine tip artist pen and gone in and done some outlining. You can do that. Or something kind of fun is to find your colored pencils, your children's colored pencils and add some dimension that way. Um, I don't have a real good, great green here, but we'll grab this one. And it's probably not super dry either, but just kind of go in and outline a few of the leaves here and there. So yeah, just kind of go in. You can even just add some stems. You don't have to do it right on the leaf. You don't have to even outline it perfectly. Just kind of go around it. Just do a few of them, or you can do it all if you want. Like I said, whatever you feel like doing, it's your painting. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of the roses, or I can even get my black colored pencil to add my dots. Or I can use my black colored pencil to add lines. So there you go and sign it. For a long time I didn't sign my art, but anything you make you need to sign. Okay. I decided to add a few more outlines and I even kind of was able to fix my sunflower by adding some colored pencil because I'd really messed that up, but I kind of doctored it up a little bit with some of the colored pencil and it looks a little better. Uh, yeah, just keep adding as much or as little as you'd like. Okay. Thank you for joining our paint party. Um, it would be fun if you could even, even gather some friends together, do it together, learn together, or do it by yourself at home. You can watch it over and over again if you need to refresh your memory on things. And we really want to see what you end up creating. So please tag Moonbeam Apparel and please tag Millie Made Art. And happy painting.